Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. In today's video guys, we're going to show you a video how to remove and replace your oil cooler on uh, Dodge Journey guys, right here. Now, let me introduce you guys that we will have more than 200 videos on a Dodge Journey, so please guys subscribe to the channel for more videos. Quite a few videos will be made. Our mission at the shop is to save you guys as much money as we can by teaching you how to fix your car for free. Now, this is the oil cooler here. This is a really weak spot on those. They develop leaks, sometimes it's just the seals, other times it's a cracked cooler. Uh, this is uh, because people will get that cap too tight and as a result, when they get the cap too tight, the housing will break and it will start dripping oil. Uh, in our case, it was just seals. So, uh, the procedure for removing and replacing is the same. Stay with us guys, we're going to start on it. All the two parts, you can find them listed in the description of the video below for your convenience, so please check them out. You can see we will have to do quite a bit of disassembly to get to it. So stay with us guys and we're going to show you what to do now. First you need to drain your coolant. Second, we need to take things apart. So quite a bit of work ahead of us. Let's start on it now. So in order to drain the coolant, uh, you might need to jack the car up a little bit on both sides. Always use jack stands. Okay, not just the jack itself. Jack stands on both sides. You need to go on the front and here and uh, then we'll need to remove that cover okay that cover so we can access the drain plug for the uh, radiator as well with a plastic uh, with actually with a, with a panel removal too with a clip removal too we're going to pop those clips open now okay this is uh, this is a really really good spray and this spray guys if you spray the clip just a little bit okay just a little bit inside uh, and let them sit for a little bit you're not going to break them and they'll come off okay really easy after that so you can see one of them came out you pull the middle piece out and the rest of it uh, they will have so much mud and dust stuck in them that you will have to soak them a little bit otherwise you have to get new clips we're going to show you okay where to get new clips from if you need to Okay, you can see, oh, this one came out as well. Perfect, just like that. And we'll continue doing that now to the rest of them. Okay, we have one right here in the corner. So this one I can just spray through here a little bit. Okay, check out all the dust and the rest coming out of them. That's just unbelievable. So we'll keep doing that guys and uh, the next scene we're going to show you where all the clips are so we don't waste your time just watching how we pull them. Uh, the procedure is not too complicated but just takes a little bit of time. And uh, once we remove that uh, trim we will show you where they are. Also we will have some on the inside there and uh, again to clarify that's the piece that we'll be removing now. So here, right in front of the tire, okay, we have one more clip that we need to remove. Sometimes when you open them, if you grab them with the pliers, it works a little bit better. We have one on the inner side there of the fender liner. We need to remove this one as well. And uh, the one in the wheel well, usually, will be stuck really, really bad. This is because you have more mud and dust there. So we'll be using the pliers on this one. Okay, came out. You can see those by the wheels guys are incredibly bad. Uh, stay with us towards the end, I'm going to show you where we get ours from and you can check out uh, in the description of the video below. They have an amazing deal on uh, replacement clips because I guarantee you're going to break some of those, no matter how much you try. So check out, these are all the clips, how many clips we got now. Once we remove the piece, I'm going to show you exactly how many there are. Let's come now on this side. Okay, just grab that piece and pull it straight down. Okay, it's coming out. And now we can show you a little bit better what we're talking about. 
so everywhere you see a hole guys there is a clip check it out now on the bottom okay one two three four five six here then we go seven eight nine ten eleven there twelve okay thirteen thirteen clips then we have one two three four four clips there and uh, do you not forget the side ones that attach to the fender liners okay one here and one on the other side so now we are ready to go under the car now okay this is uh, where your radiator is located okay all the radiators actually and uh, right here okay I'm trying to focus here you can see this is guys your drain plug with a Phillips screwdriver so we'll need to get that one loose now make sure that your car okay is not uh, it's not hot because if it's hot that thing can spray and burn you really bad use eye protection as well uh, make sure the coolant is cold and we'll show you what we need to do next okay we got the fuel of screwdriver now we have a container to collect everything and finally finally guys we're ready to start draining the coolant out of that thing Okay, you can see it just start leaking like that now. So, what we'll do next, we'll go ahead and open the coolant reservoir because it will be creating some back pressure. Okay, and I'm still working. It, it got air. Okay, but the port came all the way out now. And check it out how fast it's coming out. So we will let it drain like that until all of it comes out. You'll never be able to get all the coolant out of the vehicle, especially if you have the uh, heater for the petrol seat and all that stuff. So uh, we'll see how much we're going to get now. We let the jack down, that way we'll get a little bit more coolant out of it because everything will be level and uh, the coolant will come more to the front. Alright guys, this is the drain plug, that's what it looks like now. Uh, and uh, you can check out, it has a rubber seal as well, that's a plastic uh, drain plug, so be careful how you get that thing tight, not to over tighten it. Now, uh, the replacement clips that I told you, that we'll be using because we broke some of ours. Okay, check it out, we'll include that in the description of the video below. It comes with all the tools that you need to remove the, the clips also. Those are the replacement clips. All that. It's cheaper than just buying a few clips at a parts store. And you can see how many clips you have. Uh, I believe those will be like the one that we need. You have different sizes so you can see exactly which one fits your vehicle. Okay, so we're ready to uh, install the drain plug now. We drain uh, all of it, nothing comes out now. You can see barely drips, one drop per every five seconds. So uh, you'll never be able to get as much out as uh, as you think you will, but it's a pretty big system and we probably got about six to seven quarts of coolant out of there. So just get this one tight. So next uh, we just need to get a flathead screwdriver, get that clamp loose now. Okay, let's see if we can get that boot out. Yep, perfect. And then uh, there is one more clamp right there. Okay, we're getting this one out now. So now we just grab it and we gently need to pull that thing out. Careful not to break any vacuum hoses in the way or anything like that. Okay, you can see, okay, like that. So now we have one rubber guide a glide right here. Uh, this one, in our case, looks like it's broken. You have two more on the back side. Okay, they're like, you'll feel them. One right here, one over there. And what do you need to do? Okay, you need to pull straight up to come out of the rubber bushings. 
And after that, okay, this sensor here for the temperature, uh, intake temperature sensor, pull that one out. And when it's out of the other two sensors, okay, all we have to do now, just start pulling it out. Okay, and now, we just need to mess with it, okay, until we get it out. I think it will come out only one way. Because there is one, uh, one thing holding on the bottom. So let me figure out okay, which way this thing will come out. And we will show you what is the easiest way to remove it. So what we will do, uh, we will actually remove that little hose, it's in the way. Okay, so let me get this one out of here now. Uh, <coughs> if the engine is hot, never do that because it's part of the cooling system. Okay, you don't want to burn yourself. Because it could be under enormous amount of pressure. So, Okay, it got loose now. You might be able to do it without removing the hose. Okay, but I wouldn't recommend it. Now, right here there is one clamp on the back side, one plastic retainer that we need to uh, pop up. That way the holes will go down. Okay, like that. And now I think, let's see if we'll be able to pull that guy out of here. Oh, maybe still will not work, guys. Okay, this thing is ridiculous, I'm telling you. So, I don't know if it will come out without removing the intake manifold, the upper intake. Because there is two guys holding on the back. So if you push towards the back, okay, come out like that. I think we almost got it out, okay, like that. Those are the two, oh yeah, there was a little bit of water. Uh, there are two bushings on the back that we need to release in order to pull that thing out. Let me show you where they are on the engine quick. Okay, if you look towards the back side, this is one of them. This is the other one right there. So uh, next, you can remove the whole upper intake together with, the, I believe, with the throttle body. We will inspect here in a second, but we will take them apart uh, because we want to make video guys how to replace throttle body, how to clean it as well. We want to clean ours because those are uh, known to give uh, engine light on, engine coats, and a little bit of unstable idling. So we'll, we'll be cleaning ours. Check out the video. So with eight millimeter socket now. Okay, there are four bolts that we need to, four screws that we need to remove. Here we will have to do it by hand, we will not be able to do the impact because it's a little bit of limited room. And it's a good thing we decided to remove the throttle body because, ch check this thing out, we have electrical tape stuck inside somewhere, it sucked it through the intake got there and that's why the car was idling a little bit funny. So one more. So two left. Okay this and now we have one more on top holding, but let's remove this one. Perfect. Now <coughs> we need to disconnect the wires here. Okay, this. 
you kind of slide it out. Now uh, this wire right here, you can see that's a safety pin. You need to pull that thing okay out. Okay, like that. Press down now. Okay, that's perfect. And pull it out. And we got the throttle body out of the way now. This is where the electrical tape is stuck. So now we need to get 8mm socket and we'll need to start removing uh, a few a few screws now for the upper intake. It's very important not to over tighten those later. It says 7 to 9 Newton meters. So we keep doing that now. We'll be fixing a common oil leak on that engine as well. We have so many videos, so many videos guys. If you have any specific problem, drop a comment below. We'll get the idea about fixing things and uh, also we'll try to make a video for your specific problem. Okay, those are loose now. With 10 millimeter, we have to remove two nuts holding the intake right here. That's the upper intake. Okay, perfect. This one's been loose for like two seconds and we're still spinning it. Great. Okay, don't drop things like we do. Now we need to start uh, disconnecting a few hoses. We need to also disconnect, okay, here the, uh, this will be the mass, a uh, map sensor in a little bit. Okay, that map sensor right here. Okay, we need to pull that red thing to the back. Now press down on it and pull. <coughs> pull the wire out, but ours is stuck a little bit. Okay, perfect. Okay, with the clip removal tool, we need to remove that holder there. Again, all the tools and parts guys that we use will be listed in the description of the video below the video, so please check it out for your convenience. This thing is almost done, we just want to make sure we don't break them, because if we do we have to replace all that stuff later. Okay, perfect, like that. Now we have one vacuum hose right here that we will need to pull out. <laughs> this one, we might even do it in a little bit. When I get to it. Okay, and uh, in the meantime, we'll remove that hose there. Okay, this one, I got it loose, but it's moving now. Okay, it's coming out. Perfect. Just careful not to break your intake. Now, we can go ahead, remove that bracket here, that clamp, and uh, we need to pull that hose out now. This one will be stuck, most likely. Okay, like that. Here, we have one more nut holding. Two nuts. Okay, one on this side, one on the other side, with that 10 millimeter socket. So now it's still holding guys, uh, this bracket right here, <coughs> we need to uh, go ahead and remove those brackets so we can get it out, uh, quite a bit of 
disassembly here. So now we'll be removing that cable here. Okay, all over the bow there is one plastic holder for the wires here, so we need to pull that one out and this one usually you want to get it a little bit on each side, okay, and then it will come out. If you just try to go on one side, okay, it's not going to come out. Okay, and you can see this one came out. Now we can uh, we can use, let's see, a wrench, I think, that will actually let us take that bolt off. So we're on the left side of the engine now where we remove the two nuts. So what we'll be doing now, we'll try to remove that, uh, that uh, nut and bolt and get that bracket out. And if that bracket comes out now, we won't have to mess with the ones on the front. So we want to see which one is easier guys. So you don't have to do the same amount of work that we do, probably save you a little bit of headache. Okay, this nut is almost out. Perfect. So what we did right here now, okay, we pulled that bracket of the of the bolt here. Okay, you can see I pulled it out, and then I pulled it up like that. And now we're going to use a 13 millimeter deep socket to remove that bolt, and this bracket should come out, hopefully. Okay, so we have extension with the deep socket 13. And we're trying to remove that bolt now. Whoever thought of that design, guys, I think they wanted you to go to the dealership. Because that's, uh, that's quite a bit of work. Okay, we need to just pull it out in a little bit. Perfect. It's right there. Now we'll just grab it. Pull the bolt out. Okay, this is what it looks like. Let me let me show you a little bit more. Okay, it goes this way on the bracket. Now we will need to pull that bracket out like that. Okay, and we can just leave it there now. We have one more bolt right here uh, with the 8 millimeter that we need to remove. That's uh, one that we didn't see at first. So we'll go ahead, remove that one now, and uh, then we'll be ready to continue with the next step. Okay, let's see now if we can lift up on this side a little bit and get it out of here. Perfect. So you can see that that saved us quite a bit of headache, guys. Now one of the gaskets, okay, is stuck here. The other ones are over there. You can see that's how they need to be, right here. Now we'll need to cover those holes. So we're going to cover the intake now. Make sure that you cover your holes so you don't drop anything, even I would recommend to put a bigger towel or something because if you drop something in the valves and you don't notice it your engine will be done. Okay now we can pull that piece, it's extremely dirty and dusty usually so pull that thing out and we can proceed with the next step. So next, okay, we'll need to go ahead and disconnect the ignition coils here so uh, we'll need to press on the back side here, press down, okay, and just pull them out. Okay, each one of them like that. Okay, this one is stuck a little bit. It's easier if you press them with the screwdriver. Next, we need to uh, disconnect the fuel injectors here and with a flathead screwdriver, if you come like right here, that red piece, okay, need to come up. Okay, like that. Check it out. This one there as well. Bigger screwdriver is better. Okay, this one came out too much. So we can put it in actually. 
it doesn't need to go all the way out it's just a safety so the the clip doesn't get loose okay perfect like this one now if you come on this side there is one tube that you press in on the right side and at the same time you disconnect it okay this is uh, this is the tube I'm talking about check it out press in here and pull it out if that red thing is still down you will not be able to press that tube and it will not come out okay first if it's stuck press down then push on the tube and then okay you pull it out let me just grab it with my hands here this one is a little bit stuck so we need to press in and still stuck here so we need to help the tooth a little bit here now okay perfect just like that we will install the red thing because when we when you remove it you gain a little bit more leverage and we can flip the wires on the side now we'll do the same thing to the rear now uh, we disconnected the red pieces already we lifted them up uh, now <coughs> we'll try to pull the injectors out okay again just push in on those and disconnect them if it's still stuck pull that red thing out more okay you can pull it almost all the way out so one person needs to be holding it with the hand so it doesn't fly away and later you need to install it because otherwise it's not gonna work now we have to cover your intake again because if you drop something you have to take everything apart to get to the intake valves and vacuum it and get everything out otherwise you will damage your engine. We need to disconnect now the wires right there from the valve cover. Now we have one more here. Okay, let's see if this one is gonna come out. Okay, no. So we'll get the red thing out again. Okay, perfect. And let me see if I can lift this thing up a little bit more. But one person needs to hold it with a finger on top because otherwise if it flies away we are going to lose it. It might get stuck on the engine somewhere and we don't want that to happen. Alright now. Let's do the last one here. Perfect. And just pull this one out now. It looks like this guy is stuck, so if we get it out like that, okay, we'll be able to pull yep, the injectors out, but we need to disconnect the cable now. Okay, perfect. Let's install that uh, red piece here in. Okay, like that. So next we're going to vacuum here. You can see how much stuff we have. Uh, we don't want that thing to go uh, in the intake. So uh, that's what we'll be doing. We'll get the vacuum and just vacuum a little bit to make sure that we clean everything.
So now we need to disconnect the fuel line guys, you have to be extremely careful, this thing is under pressure, you have a fire extinguisher on the side, also you use eye protection because it can sprain your eyes and hurt you really bad. Gloves, don't ask me why I don't use gloves, we'll put a towel here now. Okay, there is a way to actually minimize the fuel pressure and drain it, but uh, we don't have the tool, so we do it this way. So what we do, push it all the way in now, okay, check it out, all the way in, push on the two teeth, in and then start pulling out now I'll go slowly because there might be fuel pressure and I don't want that to spray so I'll just hold my hand to prevent it to go in, in my eyes okay and it came out like that you can see just some fuel but not too too bad next we need to disconnect okay those wires there in order to remove the lower intake with the fuel rail we had a video guys we made a video how to replace fuel injectors if you want to see that it's on the channel and we have one more on the bottom here okay this one it's coming out but we'll need to help it with the pliers a little bit because it's too long Okay, perfect, just like that came out. Now after you vacuum here, make sure everything's good so you don't get anything in the engine. We have, uh, I believe, four, six bolts, eight bolts. Maybe eight bolts that we need to remove. It's very important how you get those things tied later because if you over tighten them, you can, you can damage things. So you can see three bolts so far on this side. This one will be the fourth one. Okay, right here. Every time you remove and replace that, guys, uh, yeah, it's recommended to put new gaskets. Okay, so if you want to see where we get again ours from, check out the description of the video, guys. It's for your convenience and a really, really affordable price. A little bit of cheating. Okay, perfect. Now we can go ahead, grab this one. One bolt is still holding on this side. And uh, we should be able to pull it up. Let's see if anything else is holding here now. Okay guys, just like that. So we'll cover our holes here uh, because we need to clean all that stuff and we don't want anything to go in the valves and the cylinders. Uh, so uh, make sure you cover them with something really good guys. We'll use the vacuum and later it's important not to forget to remove that because you say goodbye to your engine if you do forget to remove them. So let's go ahead and proceed with the next step now.
Okay, so uh, we need to disconnect that wiring harness, that red thing here. Okay, you need to lift it up. Let me show you. It goes up. Okay, that's the safety lock there. Then push in on the clip and pull it out. And eventually that thing comes out. Let us show you where you need to press in. Okay, right there. Just press in and pull it out. Okay, this is, uh, this is one of them. Now we have one more on the bottom that we need to disconnect as well. So this one, there is a place where you push on the back side. Okay, right there, push in and then pull the clip out. Now, even though we drain the coolant, most likely there will be st still some coolant and in this uh, hose right here. So when we lift it up, there is four or five holes underneath. That's uh, where the O-rings are. And uh, we'll probably mix the oil and the coolant. So what we'll have to do after that, guys, you have to put fresh coolant. Uh, for your system probably and uh, drain the oil and change the oil and the oil filter as well so with eight millimeter reverse torques here we'll be removing a few bolts now Okay, we have one more towards the back. Okay, right there. I can see that we still have one more holding. Okay, and this one is out now. So, Let's see if we try to pull it up a little bit, what's going to happen. We'll probably leak oil, we'll leak coolant, it'll be a big mess. Uh, not so much so far. Check out guys now all the oil here. You can see how much oil the car leaked in the V. So definitely, definitely quite a bit of an oil leak. Okay, there is one clamp holding that hose down, so we just, I put the gloves on and I just pulled it straight up, came out. Now we're going to pull it up and we're going to disconnect that coolant hose now with the pliers. Okay, perfect. And you can see this is uh, the oil cooler out of there with the oil fueler assembly. So this is, uh, uh, in our case, what we did, we just replaced the seals, guys. Okay, you can see we put new seals, our housing, everything looks good. It's not cracked, so there is no need to replace it. Those are the old ones, and check out how okay, dry and flat they are. They're like plastic, especially this one. I think this one was causing our leak. So uh, there was no need for us to actually replace it, but even if you buy a new one, 
the procedure is exactly the same you just remove it the way we did and now we have to put everything together guys in reverse order that we took it apart we already cleaned our engine here okay you can see all the oil that was here we clean it uh, because otherwise your engine will be smelling like oil when it gets warm so we want to clean that uh, make sure that everything's good so hopefully guys the video will be helpful to some of you uh, please hit that subscribe button for more videos guys and uh, hopefully we can save you quite a bit of money and see you guys next time